Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. And whether you're new or returning to the channel, it's great to have you here and I hope you enjoy the video. In this episode, I'll be making a vase from Sapili segmented rings with a feature epoxy resin insert. So without further ado, let's get into it. You join me whilst I'm cutting the Sapili segments. Each ring will contain 18 pieces for seven rings. I won't show me cutting all 126. I think you get the idea. After cutting the segments, each one is sanded to clean up the edges. I do this mainly because the rings in the base will have epoxy resin joints, so it's important to get rid of all the scraggy bits. And speaking of the base, that's next. For this I needed three segmented rings with resin joints. I used the 3D printed template to hold the 18 segments and an elastic band to stop them moving around. Then I used another 3D printed part. This is super glued in place to maintain the 2mm joints after the grade template is removed. Of the three rings in the base, the upper and lower were put together in the same way, with just one of the white spacers super glued in place. The centre ring has two spacers, one on each side. These have joint spacers on either side, so when the three rings are sandwiched together, it creates consistent 2mm joints. And this is the centre ring, with one of the double sided joint spaces glued in place. After I pressed it out of the grey template and refixed an errant segment, I added the second spacer. And with the rings complete, I pressed the first two together and applied super glue to hold them in place. Then I tried to seat the third ring, but in my haste I decided to use some gentle persuasion from the hammer, but this didn't help and resulted in dislodging a number of the segments, which all had to be re-glued. After a bit more finagling, the rings were ready for the next bit. I added cut mixing sticks to the side to keep it central in the casting bucket. I made a waste block and a solid Sapili core to fill the void in the base. So moving on it was time to cast the resin. I mixed three batches, the colours for this project were white, purple, green and pink. I split the third batch after mixing, then added the mica powder, which is how I ended up with the four colours. Each batch was thoroughly mixed, then left to pre-cure before adding it to the casting bucket. And in the current 30 degree summertime heat here in the UK, that didn't take very long at all. In fact, the purple got so hot, it was uncomfortable to touch. But with all the resin safely poured, 
I placed the whole thing into the pressure pot, added 50 psi and left it to fully harden for 24 hours. Next was the four segmented rings for the upper section. These were solid, as in no resin joints, so these were easy to do. I applied Type 1 2 to one side of each segment, then loosely assembled the ring, and used a hose clamp to hold it all together and squeeze the joints. I won't show all of the three remaining rings being done, but they went together in the same way, and once done, they were left overnight for the glue to cure. the next day and the first job was to remove the hose clamps and pass the segmented rings through the drum sander to level and flatten them. and after sanding, they were glued together to form the upper section. Once again, using a liberal amount of Type Bond 2 applied to one side, the four rings were stacked and then held in place with hot melt glue. The last ring to go on the blank was the rim. I flipped the whole thing over to make it easier to centralise and added some weight, and this was left overnight for the glue to cure. Another day has passed and it's time to check on the main blank. As soon as I got the blank out the pressure pot I now would be having problems. I'd forgotten to wax the casting bucket, and no matter how much I tried, I couldn't release it, so I had to cut it free. Once it was out, all looked good. The voids around the waste block didn't matter, as this would be all hollowed out, and the rest was solid. The only thing I wasn't happy with was the top. It was a bit rough, and it wasn't level. So I chiseled away the excess waste block to get it ready for the drum sander. To be honest, the drum sander probably wasn't the best choice for doing this job. I think fixing it in the lathe and turning it down would have been a better idea. The base wasn't level, so it kept tilting and grabbing on the drum. So I had to make very light passes, both on top and on the base, gradually getting it flat. done, I marked the centre and drilled a hole at either end so I could fix it to the lathe using a woodworm screw and a tailstock to secure it firmly in place. The 
blank was already well balanced, so I turned the lathe speed up to around 900 RPM and set to exposing the segmented rings in the base. I was keen to see if the segments were parallel to the base. If not, at this early stage I would have been able to reset the centre point on the underside to bring it back in line, but I didn't need to worry. As I uncovered the first joint, I could see it was okay. I kept going until most of the mixing sticks had been removed, then I turned my attention to cutting the mortise. I cut the mortise in the usual way. First I defined the outer edge with a quarter inch parting tool. Then I cleaned out most of the inner material, used a dovetail cutter to cut the dovetail, and then I finished it off with a bowl gouge and the skew. And after a quick check, here you can see what's left of the joint spaces. I sanded the underside from 80 to 1000 grit, then applied a finish, topped off with gloss finishing wax. With the main blank done, or so I thought, I fixed the top section into the coal jaws and set about roughly shaping the outside. This was just to get it balanced. The main job was to get the inside hollowed out before I glued the two halves together. I turned the piece around so I could shake the lower ring and get access to the inside. It was round about this point I realised I would have to hollow out the main resin blank as well before fixing the top in place. Anyway, that would have to wait until this was done. Shaping the inside was fairly straightforward. I just had to make sure I would have plenty of overlap between the two pieces so I didn't take too much off the lower ring. I did measure it just to make sure, then I hollowed it out, only cutting through three rings. The fourth ring I would be able to get out from the top. With freshly sharpened tools, the sapili was cutting very easily, and after I tidied up the glue face with a skew, I made a few more passes with a gouge, and this bit was done. I sanded just the inside from 80 to 400 grit, and applied a wax finish. Then it was on to hollowing out the main blank. To begin with, I used a 3 8 bowl gouge to cut away the waste block, and it was good to see that the softwood hadn't soaked up very much of the resin. Once most of the softwood had been removed, I switched to the full-size carbide with a negative rate cutter. With this, I began slicing into the resin sidewall, down into the base, to expose the segmented ring and the sapili core. It 
was all going very well. Using the carbide cutter, the resin sidewall was coming along nicely. I was a bit concerned that I would be left with some of the waste block near the base, but with each pass, it was disappearing. The only slight problem was the superiorly segmented ring. It wasn't cutting so easily, and I wanted to cut into it to reduce the weight in the finished piece. It was no good. I would have to be a bit more aggressive with the Sapili. So I broke out the mid-sized carbide with a standard cutting head. I offered it up and started cutting. I only managed three cuts before it grabbed and ripped the blank clean off the chuck. So perhaps the other cutter was the better choice. Luckily there wasn't any damage. So after I refixed it to the lathe, I finished off the inside with a full size carbide and a large negative rate scraper. And I also decided a slightly heavier vase wouldn't be a bad idea. I sanded just the inside from 80 to 800 grit and applied the finish with my usual finishing process. A quick clean up with a skew to get a good gluing surface and it was time to join the two pieces. With this I used rapid setting epoxy. Applied to the top section, this was then offered up to the main blank. The joints in the segmented base and top were aligned with each other and it was clamped in place with a tailstock. Then after 30 minutes, the joint was fully cured. So I released the tailstock, removed the coal jaws, reapplied the tailstock to hold the workplace firmly in place, turned the lathe speed up to around 1100 RPM, and began shaping the base. I'd already decided that this piece would have a pedestal, so using a 3 8 bowl gouge, I cut into the segmented rings to form the cutout. Working on either side of the cut, I gradually worked my way in towards the center. I was fairly sure I wouldn't be able to expose the resin around the core, so I stopped short and started to blend the resin featuring into the segments. As you can see, there was still quite a lot of resin overlapping the upper segments and it had to be removed. So I switched to the full size carbide and concentrated on cutting away the excess material. By chance, this shape presented an opportunity for a bit of an overhanging design feature, but I couldn't see how it would work with the upper section. So I cut it down working my way towards blending it into the segmented ring. Gradually I cut the resin section down, roughly blending it into the superiorly segmented rings. I used a skew to get it a bit closer to the final shape then I turned my attention to the base. This was too chunky and needed to be trimmed down. And I also made the cutout deeper, but this created a new problem. I cut into the 3D printed spacer and its pure white color didn't look good against the resin joints. Whilst I had a think, I reduced the diameter of the base. I figured it needed to be around the same size as the resin joint above the next ring. Having done that, it gave me the opportunity to cut some more out of the upper part of the base so I could expose more of the white spacer. And then I made the upper cut out deeper to bring it in proportion with the base. I used the parting tool to remove what was left of the spacer, removing just enough to get rid of it. Then I began shear scraping to blend it into the upper and lower cut lines. This made the base look too wide, so I reduced it a bit more, 
literally scraping it down till it looked just right. The flat transition in the cutout didn't suit it either. So very carefully I used the mid-sized carbide to blend the two cut lines into a soft curve. And that was the outer surface more or less done. I used a skew and a large negative rate scraper to blend and fair the curves and the full size carbide to soften the sharp transition onto the rim. bit of sanding to check for tool marks and it was on to forming the opening in the top. The ball gouge seemed to be the best choice for this. I cut away the waste material forming a sweeping curve down into the opening. The tailstock was just getting in the way so fairly quickly I had to get rid of that. Then I began shear scraping, but I didn't want to risk it in a catch, so out came the full size carbide. The carbide was much easier to control. I gently removed the excess material from the opening, blending the sapele round and up towards the outer edge. A few more passes and tidying up the edge of the rim, it was done. I sanded the top and the outer surface from 80 to 600 grit, then continued up to 3000 grit on the resin. cleaned down with denatured alcohol. This was followed by two liberal coats of sanding sealer, each one denibbed with a non-abrasive scotch bright pad. Next up, Yorkshire Grit, just a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Then the resin polishing. First up, Merca Polishine 10, a single application thoroughly cleaned away, ready for the next stage. Polishine 5, one coat, polished off to leave a deep shine. And to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. Two coats, buffed to seal and protect the surface. And that's it, another project finished. And this one took a lot to do. Not so much in the turn-in, it was a preparation that took the time, but nonetheless, I think it was worth it, and I hope you like it too.
I particularly like the way the lighter coloured joints in the base blend up into the resin midsection and the chatoyance in the upper part, well that just tops it off. Anyway, with all that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, a thumbs up will be much appreciated and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.